Coco Adele and Velvet Scarlatina, two members of the illustrious Team Coffee, who got an expansion of their story in Ruby Before the Dawn, and now will face off 1v1 in the next and final exhibition match of the Phoenix Festival Tournament, which is set to begin next weekend at the start of August. For now, these two will fight using Amity Coliseum as the stage, fighting to a full aura break with no possibilities of a ring out. I'll do my best to analyze their weapons, their semblances, and their fighting styles to determine who I think would ultimately end up winning in a fight. But overall, it will be decided by all of you as to who the victor ends up being. Use the top link in the description below, go to a Google form where you can decide between Velvet and Coco as to who would end up winning, and give a brief explanation as to why, whether it's overall experience, semblance advantage, weapon advantage, etc. Now before we get into discussing today's matchup, we need to go over our last match between Jean Arc and Sienna Khan. In that video, I said that their fight would have an interesting dynamic because both of their powers seem to contradict one another. With Sienna Khan's grudge, her power can increase the more the aura of those around her is decreased or broken, and Jean, being in the unique situation of having a very large aura reserve and his semblance of aura amp, he can quickly recover his aura from any damage that it's already sustained, thus nullifying any boosts that Sienna already had. And in that video, I said that it would be a very drawn-out battle, but thanks to Sienna Khan's experience being a leader of the White Fang and having just more battle experience overall, on top of the speed that she already has displayed, she would eventually end up overwhelming Jean, being able to prevent him from recovering and defending at the same time, and would ultimately end up the victor. And thanks to the over 200 people who voted on the Google form, it seems the majority does agree. There's about 60% who voted for Sienna, 30% for Jean, and about 10% thinking that the battle would just be drawn out so long that it would ultimately end up being a draw. Most people quoting that Sienna would just have more experience and speed, and she would ultimately be the victor. Though there was a decent number of people saying that Jean's aura amp and recovery was just so much that Sienna would not be able to overwhelm it, and would eventually end up being overwhelmed by Jean, using up a majority of her aura, and Jean would ultimately end up being the winner. I could see this going either way, but ultimately, Sienna Khan does end up winning over Jean Arc. But getting into today's video between Coco and Velvet, we'll start off by discussing Coco, as Velvet is definitely the more complicated of the two, and I'm probably not even going to be able to cover all of the different possibilities that are possible for Velvet, because they are there, there's there's a lot of them. But Coco is definitely a lot simpler when it comes to her overall fighting style and her weapon, as her weapon is Gianduja. I think that's how you pronounce it, not exactly sure, feel free to correct me in the comments down below, but this is her handbag that can transform into a Gatling gun, which is also probably one of the strongest weapons that we have seen in the Ruby series, even considering Nora's grenade launcher and Elm's rocket launcher, as in conjunction with Coco's semblance of hype, Gianduja can rip through hordes of Grimm like they are absolutely nothing. Thanks to her semblance of hype, she can hype up the activity of dust in her vicinity, anywhere near her. She often uses this on the dust rounds in her Gianduja itself, and thus allowing the rounds to be super powered, so much so that in Volume 2 we saw her rip through Deathstalkers and Nevermore like they were nothing. So she has a lot of power within her weapon, and the power that she has herself cannot be underestimated, because the recoil from this gun, having hyped up the activity of the dust rounds, must be pretty insane, and Coco is barely pushed back at all. Not to mention, a simple swing of this handbag can pretty much take out a Beowulf, seemingly an Alpha Beowulf as well, in just a single hit. Coco is incredibly strong, sturdy, and has a weapon that's absolutely terrifying. Her one weakness, though, does seem to be when an opponent is faster than her, as seen with Mercury Black and Emerald Sestrai when they fought against Yatsuhashi and Coco, being more of the slower fighters of Team Coffee. They were just overwhelmed by Mercury Speed and Emerald messing with their minds. They were just at a disadvantage in that fight. But Coco is definitely someone who cannot be underestimated. There is one thing that Coco has to constantly keep in mind when using her Gian Duja. She can't constantly be firing off rounds as her ammunition is very finite, and using a Catling gun, it chews through it fairly quickly. There's been multiple times in After the Fall and Before the Dawn where her ammunition has gotten very low to nothing, and she's had no ammo remaining and had to transform it into a handbag and not been as versatile as she could be, though she's still a formidable force with just her handbag and strength alone. Coco, Coco's definitely a force to be reckoned with, but still, it's something that she has to keep in mind as in this 
fight, she couldn't just constantly be using Gianduja. She'll have to think a bit more on her feet on how to strategize and win against Velvet. Now when we get to Velvet Scarlatina and the things that she's capable of, well, think of any fighting style that we've seen in Ruby Sa thus far, and any weapon that Velvet could have had the chance to take a picture of, and she can use all of them in any combination that she so desires. Velvet uses her weapon, Anisadora, a camera, to take pictures of both opponent's weapons, allies' weapons, any weapons that she so desires, and can conjure hard light dust copies of them. And thanks to her photographic memory, she can perfectly imitate any fighting style that she has seen, after just seeing it a single time. So she is extremely versatile in anything that she can do as long as she has the photos to back it up. And considering she's been at the Vital Festival tournament, has had the opportunity to take pictures of any student that we have presumed at the Vital Festival tournament, as well as any pictures that she would have taken in Before the Dawn, and considering this is the overall Phoenix Festival tournament itself, after the first round of the tournament, she could essentially, we could assume that she could essentially imitate any of the fighting styles she's seen up to that point and take pictures of any of the weapons seen up till that point. So if you want to see Velvet fighting with the fighting style of Tyrion, well, that's going to be possible after round one. So yeah, Velvet is the most versatile character in the entire Ruby series that we have seen thus far. But that doesn't mean she's completely invincible. Her hard light dust copies of weapons are definitely very useful, but they aren't as strong as the initial weapons. They're sharp and sturdy, they can do some damage, but but they don't interact with the semblances as many weapons are based on the semblance of the user. As Coco's, for example, she hypes up the dust bullets with her semblance of hype. If Velvet copied Gianduja, she wouldn't be able to do the same damage as Coco would be able to do. Not even close, so it just wouldn't be as effective. That doesn't mean it's still not effective on its own right, and one thing that was very interesting about Velvet's hard light dust copies that was revealed in Before the Dawn, hard light dust has the capability to copy the function of other types of dust. Because right in the first chapter of Before the Dawn, Velvet copies Neptune's weapon, Tryhard, which is a weapon that has lightning dust in it, able to use electricity to attack opponents, and Velvet, creating this hard light dust copy of Neptune's weapon, was able to slam it into the ground and electrocute her opponents. So hard light dust has the capability of mimicking the functionality of other types of dust. Makes me curious as to what types of dust actually went into creating hard light, as we know it's already an artificial type of dust. But regardless, that just adds to the versatility of Velvet, and it's going to be very hard for anyone to come up against her and be able to win easily, though I think Coco might be one of the ones who has a very good opportunity to do so, being so familiar with Velvet's fighting styles already, what weapons she prefers, and also what she might be capable of in battle. So how exactly would this battle play out in Amity Coliseum? Now, Coco would probably start off activating her Gianduja if they start off at a decent distance from one another, well, Coco would definitely start off trying to fire at Velvet. Being conscious of ammo, of course, but firing off a few weapons, lowering her aura would definitely be the best case scenario. Velvet, obviously knowing that this would be the case, would have to get in close to deal damage against Coco. If you're trying to fight a ranged battle against Coco, you're probably going to lose, so Velvet would just try to get in close. And probably trying to defend against it, she could always summon up hard light dust copies of Jean's shield or Yatsuhashi's fulcrum and try to block some of the bullets, but with Coco using her hype, that probably wouldn't go so well. The hard light dust would probably fade very quickly if it could even block just a couple bullets on its own. Might be useful, but I don't think it would be the best case scenario. She would have to rely on her speed, possibly using Blake's Gamble Shroud and any terrain environment to swing herself around and get close to Velvet at, or close to Coco as quickly as possible possible. Now Velvet is definitely faster than Coco in just sheer movement, but when you have a Gatling gun and you can swing it around pretty quickly, well, how fast you're running in a circle around an opponent is not going to play that much of a factor. Velvet would probably have to try to use either like Ruby's scythe and the momentum that she got from firing a sniper rifle round or Yang's gauntlets and other weapons like that to fire rounds and try to maneuver herself through the air and in momentum in different directions to avoid Coco's blasts and try to get close to her, because it would have to be a close-range fight for Velvet to have a chance to beat 
Coco. Now at that point she could summon a copy of Fulcrum, Yatsuhashi's weapon, and deal pretty heavy blows against Coco with that, because Velvet is pretty strong in her own right. In After the Fall she was able to launch Yatsuhashi in the air, just cupping her hands and launching him upwards, so Velvet's got a lot of strength to her as well, though Coco, I would argue, is definitely stronger, but still, Velvet, conjuring hard light dust copies of weapons that are meant to deal heavy damage, she could still deal quite a heavy blow against Coco. I definitely think that Velvet would be able to get close combat, but even then it wouldn't be a guaranteed victory. She would likely summon up weapons that she's more familiar with, like Fox's Sharp Retribution, or, and since she's more accustomed to using the weapons of Team Sun now, she might even summon up Scarlet David's Hook and Darling, the cutlass that he's used to using, as well as the pistol. So that could be something that Velvet would be more comfortable using and fighting close range against Coco. Coco would be forced to shift to her handbag and have to fight against Velvet close range, which would still be very difficult. But the ultimate turning point in this fight would probably be Coco's semblance, because she can hype up the dust in anywhere of a close vicinity to her. The second that Velvet got close range to her, Coco could hype up the hard light dust that Velvet is using, as well as the hard light dust that's in Anisadora to the point where it would explode. In Before the Dawn, it was displayed that Coco could hype up the dust of people just near her, but not only that, she could make volatile dust of any type go to the point of exploding. There was one point where she hyped up just gravity dust crystals to explode and blast a huge crater in the sand. Now, gravity dust isn't something that you would think of as an explosive type of dust, but when Coco focused on it and focused her aura and semblance into it, it exploded. So that would definitely be capable of the exact same thing with hard light. Now, again, in the actual world of Ruby, I don't think Coco would want to cripple the weapon of her teammate, Velvet, but in this fight we are going to assume that Coco is going to use whatever necessary to win. Assuming, of course, she's staying within the rules of the fight, and destroying an opponent's weapon is within the rules, we're going to assume that the opponent's weapon is, you know, staying functional for the next fights, etc., but I do think that Coco would end up winning this fight if Velvet couldn't find a way to overwhelm her very quickly, before she got a chance to focus on the hard light dust and focus her semblance into it, causing it to explode. I ultimately do think that Coco would be able to take out Velvet, as even with Velvet's versatility, Coco would just be able to overwhelm that by semblance advantage alone. Velvet would have to get in close range, and at that point Coco would just be able to overwhelm her. And I don't think biomes would play too much of a factor. With biomes in play though, they definitely give the advantage to Velvet, giving her more places to hide from Gian Duja and the dust rounds that Coco had, because Velvet could always just wait out the rounds of Coco, and once Coco runs out of ammo, Velvet would have a lot easier time attacking from a distance and avoiding Coco's hype, and with biomes in play, I definitely see Velvet having more of an advantage, though I don't know if that would exactly ensure her victory. Because Coco is very familiar with Velvet's fighting style and how things would play out, I think she would still be able to find a way to win, even just getting close combat and getting close enough to hype up the effects of Velvet's dust and have that deal the damage against Velvet, reducing her aura, and ultimately I do think Coco would end up being the winner. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, use the form in the link in the description, and let me know who you think would end up winning between Coco Adele and Velvet Scarlatina. Do you think that biomes would play a major factor in this fight? Do you think that Velvet, or just her versatility, would overwhelm Coco regardless of her semblance, regardless of the strength and versatility or durability that Coco has? Because Velvet, both of these characters, honestly, are forces to be reckoned with. I love Team Coffee. I can't wait to see more of them when we actually see them again in the Ruby series. But ultimately, let me know what your thoughts are. I look forward to seeing how this is going to play out, and I'm really looking forward to the Phoenix Festival tournament itself. The tournament brackets will will be posted later this week before the start of the tournament. It's scheduled to start on August 2nd, which is Sunday. That's when each of the rounds is going to start. I'm going to try to post multiple videos a day, briefly going over each of the fight matchups. They won't be as detailed as the exhibition matches, because frankly, I just unfortunately don't have the time to go into as much detail, but I will give as much of a breakdown as I can for each of the matches. And once we get closer to the finals, they'll definitely become a lot more detailed as I analyze the strengths and weaknesses. There are going to be some fights that are more one-sided, etc. I'll post a full breakdown of the rules and everything along with that as the tournament begins, but hopefully you all are getting excited for the tournament beginning. I certainly am, and I would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and all the previous exhibition matches, and we'll look forward to the Phoenix Festival tournament. If you are looking forward to it, make sure to subscribe, join the Guild of the Eternal Flame, tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.